How did the Scarecrow earn an award? Well, he was outstanding in his field. What's going on, YouTube? As we spend time in the Westweld area due to the ongoing Westweld event, it's a perfect time to highlight all of the events and things going on in October because there's a lot to unpack. We're also going to give some quick fire tips for the ongoing event, some of the other competitions and things that are going on, and let's break it all down very quickly for you. Here is the quick snapshot for you of everything going on. This is the 10 year anniversary roadmap. You can see we've got free rewards. The current ongoing event, we have the Explorer Celebration, we have a Deathmatch Weekend, we've got the Witches Festival, the new Battlegrounds update, and 10-year celebration events. Let's go piece by piece here. And we start off with some more minor things, such as from 8.14 to 10.13, you can get your Xbox Game Pass perks. You're going to get yourself some random XP scrolls as well as some attribute respect scrolls. Nothing super crazy, but just wanted to highlight it since it's on here. Then we have the marquee event that's going on right meow, which is the Fallen Leaves of Westweld event. So during this event, you're able to get rewards, but you're also able to work towards getting a grand reward that's a community-based reward. So let's talk about a couple things here just very briefly. Let's start with what are the community-based rewards? And for those of you who are new and haven't done a community event before, all you need to do to participate is head down here to Skingrad inside the Westweld area, which is over here just to the left of Cyrodiil, and you want to talk to Grandathar, and he's going to give you a quest that just says, hey, could you put five of these alien things together? And basically, once you take that quest, you're just going to get them by randomly doing stuff in the overworld. So for example, you can find them by killing world bosses, you can find them by doing mirror more incursions, you can find them by doing delve bosses, picking up flowers off the ground, blah, blah, blah. But the key takeaway is, is that if you want to complete the quest and help with the community event, you just need to make sure that you have the quest. Because if you don't have the quest, they're not going to drop. So you have to have the quest ahead of time to do it. The number one way, if you don't want to go around and farm Mirror More Incursions, which again, you want to look for the Mirror More Incursion that's got the swords going through it. That's the active one, is to pick up flowers and other items off the ground. Uh, that's the best way to contribute towards the community-based event. And what we get for completing this community-based event is we get a Vineyard Voroplasm pet at 33% completion. And you can see that we are already 25% of the way totally complete after, I believe, two and a half days worth of work. At 66%, we are getting a cool memento. And then at 100%, that's where you get the big juicy rewards. That's where you get the pet the Legion's Arm Pack, and more. Now, and more usually actually is really good. So I've seen a Tunables. I've seen Gold Companion Gear. I've seen the entirety of the set collection for the zone given away in the and more section. So don't sleep on the and more section because it's actually pretty good. I know a lot of people were not super excited about this pet. It kind of reminds me of Star Wars a little bit too much. Other things too is that as we complete through here, we are also able to get the bonus event. So complete quests within Westwell during to get an additional days of the Explorers event, which is going to start October 8th regardless. And the more quests the community completes, the more days of gold, XP, and other benefits that we will be receiving, which is just, yeah, that's, uh, that's good. And uh, here are the breakdown where they give you the final pieces uh, that you just have to make sure that you do have the uh, Westwell zone owned and then you can check back to see the progress on the actual event itself. And important to note too, you don't have to actually contribute for the event to give you credit. All you need to do is own the gold road, which is on 50% sale, I think depending on the console that you play on. Uh, you do have to own it, but you don't have to actually participate to claim the rewards at the end of the year. And if you're a bit lost on what exactly you should be doing during this event, the number one suggestion I have is come to this area just south of the chapel, inside of the skin grad city and talk to these three individuals here each one is going to give you a daily quest these daily quests are going to give you a reward box and a skin grad rewards box which are both really good during this event the first one will give you your event tickets assuming you've not already done the pick up five alien relics quest and the nice thing too is is that not only do you get your two event tickets you're also going to get a chance to get some alien bps which are just really good furnishing plans 
Uh, so check any furnishing plans you get. You're also going to have a chance to get motifs. The sets here are okay. Uh, and the style material is also okay because people are going to be using it. So money value wise, I just do these three daily quests. One will have you do mirror more incursions. One will have you do world bosses. And one will have you go pick up ham sandwiches inside of Delve. It's very easy. You don't have to stress about the difficulty of any of these. And it's just a nice way to kind of do these events together. You also see that a lot of people are sharing uh, these together. Uh, you'll see that people are sharing and, and typing very long messages in chat. Uh, you can also share these quests together, such as Fate World Boss, because if you get the Little Timmy World Boss and then somebody else in your group gets the uh, Big Timmy World Boss, well, those are two different World Boss quests. You can share them and do them on the same character, or you can always rotate through multiple characters. Other good things to do during this event is just farm mere more incursions. The rewards you get from that are pretty good. Again, look for the swords through the map symbol to make sure that you're killing or going to the active one. You can also loot the area inside of the inn for all the dressers there, which we've talked about like a 50 bajillion times. Uh, resources is another good thing to get. Double resources on the ground in this area is good. You're also getting a chance to get other things, the boxes from that as well. But the, the key takeaway is that you really don't need to stress about this event. It's not like there's a lot of unique timed rewards here that you need that are essential to your character. There's just some good ones such as the furnishing plans that are just valuable to resell. And that's really the key takeaway. But that's about it. You don't need to stress about mid-maxing your farming of the West Weld event. Now, this next one is actually pretty big and I don't see a lot of people talking about it. And that is the Elder Scrolls Online October 2024 the ESO fam once again comes together to create and share ESO-themed fan art and screenshots in October. Keep an eye out for an official announcement in this season's prompt at the start of the month. Now, these are a bit weird. So, if you follow the Elder Scrolls Online Twitter, you will have seen that sometimes they give rewards, different prompts and things for basically going out and creating cool screenshots and fan art. The prizes range significantly from exclusive pets crowns dlc to basically things as crazy as like boom you know here's a tangible item that you can have that's pretty rare and valuable so this is just something to keep an eye out for because this could have economic effects obviously there's certain costumes that could go up in value uh, people are going to be taking themed screenshots likely halloween based ones so certain furnishings that we've seen in the golden vendor recently could go back up because a lot of them are Halloween themed. So it's just something to keep in the back of the old noggin that this is going to be something that's done. Even if you don't want to participate, it's still good to kind of be like, okay, everybody's going out and buying very specific motifs, costumes, furnishings. I should just know this in case I want to try to sell this to be on top of the market. Or I should want to know this because I myself want to enter. Next, talk about the anniversary spotlight, which we did a quick video on. Uh, but I'll go over here in a second. But basically, it's just more free rewards that you can earn. The first one being these pumpkin styled weapons, which all you need to do to earn these is have the fully styled achievement. And all you have to do for that is have a style put on all of your outfits. So you got to have styled boots, pants, shirt, gloves, helmet, whatever. You just want to go to an outfit station and apply a style to everything. It's super easy. Barely an inconvenience. The next one is a little bit more convoluted because you have to have a pet uh, and you can't get the pet until the Halloween event. So a lot of people were very confused by this, but basically during the Halloween event, you're going to be able to get rewards coffers like every event that has existed throughout the entirety of Elder Scrolls Online and it's going to have those pet feathers in there. Also, these feathers are probably going to be tradable, so keep an eye out for that because that could be a really good early gold method. But overall, it's just good to know because this is a pretty cool looking costume, but you're not going to be able to get this until Halloween actually officially starts. And then I don't know if it says it here, but basically uh, make sure you log in every day and also check your seals of endeavors because they're going to probably be Halloween themed esque rewards in there and Halloween themed s challenges starting October 1st. Then we get more information about the Explorers event, which basically, as I told you, starts October eight and then it goes until apparently as long as we earn so that's going to give us that bonus xp gold gain and it's also going to give a bonus to resources notably it doesn't say that there but it does say that 
uh, in other areas. So just keep an eye out for that event because it's a pretty good one. Double XP, double gold, double resources. There's a lot of ways you can optimize that time period. I will have an XP guide out by October 8th to go over all the best XP areas. Uh, if you're wondering double gold, what should I do? Well, do your daily risks. I'm sorry, but it's it, that's the answer. <laughs> Then we have one of our final Battlegrounds weekends ever. Get your final 4v4v4s in. I will be curious because they did say starting after Update 44 that whenever they do these special weekends, there's going to be special rewards tied to them. I'm curious to see if they're going to do any before Update 44 comes out. I suspect probably not. It's just going to be like a 25% AP boost, but Deathmatch is the funnest Battlegrounds match in my opinion. Um, usually sometimes domination is a little bit more fruitful if you actually like to play the objective and it's usually a little more balanced versus sometimes deathmatch is wholly unbalanced uh which is why they're getting away from 4v4v4s but i don't want to get into all that if there are special rewards i'll re-highlight it but likely it'll just be a bonus to ap then we have the witches festival from october 24th through november 6th which i actually predicted this start date uh so when it comes to the Halloween event, there are so many things that you can farm. And basically, the heads and tails of it is, is you pretty much complete any activity in the game and you get rewards boxes. So there are there's a spectrum of things here. Imagine a, imagine a line, right? On one side, you have activities that are just great for gold, right? And getting rewards. Then on the other side, you have things that are okay for rewards but are actually better for getting things like experience and then you've got everything in the middle where it's like here are things that are good if you want to get like good xp and good rewards here's what you can do if you want to get excellent rewards but fairly poor xp you know here's what you can do if you just want to get tons of xp and get reward boxes sprinkled in and i want to do a full video breakdown of that spectrum there there's obviously things that you can do if you have dlcs versus if you're missing certain dlcs because you can pretty much farm anything in the game, it's uh, it's pretty open to interpretation as to what's best for you. So the Witches Festival will have its own breakdown, but the key takeaway for you as a player is, is that it'll have double XP. It will reward you for pretty much any content that you do in the game, whether it's world events, delves, world bosses, you know, dungeons, pretty much anything, you can get rewarded for it. And then Update 44 launches on October 28th on PC and then it launches on console November 13th. If you were curious, there are going to be some key things to note. If you're going to be somebody that's going into Battlegrounds early on, you're going to probably be getting sets that are very valuable because nobody's going to have them. Because pretty much the only way you can get them is rewards of the worthy, and specifically almost competitive rewards of the worthy. So if you're going in and you're playing competitive and you're not using those sets, don't assume that they're worthless. I would turn around and sell them as quick as possible. But that's November, everybody. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, put them in the comments below. Uh, we're going to do an updated experience guide video. It's going to have all the best experience. If you're a solo player who has DLCs, doesn't have DLCs, if you've got a small group, if you're limited on time, you know, what should you do? And we're going to be doing a breakdown on that. We'll also have a big breakdown on the Halloween event just because the Halloween event in ESO has so much ability to farm. And it can be very overwhelming because it's like, well, this is the best if you want all of these rewards and then this other thing. But then if you want all of these rewards and then this other thing, well, this might be better. And objectively, it just depends on you. So that's why it's going to have its whole video breakdown. But as always... We're doing our three giveaway drawings. All you have to do to enter is leave a comment in the comments below. Tell me what you like to farm during the Halloween event or tell me what specifically uh, gets you going. What are your favorite XP methods? Anything like that. Second thing is just be subscribed slash follow on Twitch and Twitter. And the third thing is look for a hidden word to be flashed upon the screen. If you're the first person to comment that word, you will win. Thank you guys so much again for watching and I'll catch you later. Bye guys. You better remember to like and subscribe to Jake Clips. Or oh, you should. I might have to pluck your eyes if you don't. Or, better yet, I'll skip rope with your entrails. Do it now. Subscribe. Ta-ta. Off with you.